All right, howdy crew, and welcome to the Colorado River area just south of Laughlin, Nevada. And we're here right alongside one of the roads to look at one of the more spectacular features that we find in the Basin and Range, and especially in this lower part of the Colorado River system. This is beautifully exposed right off the road, um, and this is what's known as a detachment fault. So we're gonna spend some time talking about this and learning and exploring this really cool feature that you hear about a lot, especially some of you, those of you that have asked me about metamorphic core complexes, kind of a fancy and seemingly technical term. Um, but we're gonna explore this and learn a little bit more about it. Let's start with, so it's nicely exposed here, but I think it'll be best to start with a diagram that I've drawn that'll explain what we're seeing a little bit better. So, give me a second to get down here on the, the ground. So what I've drawn for you here is a cross section from west to east. Um, and let me use my little marker here to point things out. And so this part of the southwest is known for having quite a bit of east-west extension due to the basin and range extensional event, which began about 17 or so million years ago. So you can see the extension I've drawn there. The crust has been stretched. And when the upper portion of the crust, which is very brittle, it behaves brittly, uh, it's not as hot as the lower crust, so it doesn't flow into form. So when that stress is exerted on the upper crust, it breaks into faults. But a specific type of fault we see is a very low angle fault called a detachment fault. And so a detachment fault is a low angle normal fault caused by extension. And so what we have here at this specific one is the area below the fault is what's known as the foot wall. But sometimes we talk about detachment faults, it's oftentimes called the lower plate. And then the side of the fault above the fault, which is classically known as the hanging wall, is sometimes, as we refer to these with detachment faults, it's called the upper plate. So you can see I've drawn the Colorado River here. We've got a little bit of a, a mound here. And so that corresponds to this uh, little hill just to the right of the power poles. And you can see that that's mostly these reddish rocks. And then as we look to the left, going up the slope, the rocks are a little bit more gray. And so that would be this slope here. So here what we have are in the lower plate, some granitic rocks that are about 15 million years. It's called the Mirage Pluton. And so those rocks are fairly young, mostly granitic rocks. We have other granites on the other side of the upper, other side of the fault on the upper plate, but these are about 1.7 billion years old. So these detachment faults are able to accommodate a tremendous amount of extension. They can move rocks many kilometers um, apart and accommodate quite a bit of extension over um, the, their movement history. This detachment fault is no longer moving, no longer active, uh, probably shut down several million years ago, uh, but during its heyday it accommodated quite a bit of extension. So that's sort of the idea of how these look. To give you a little bit better context, let's turn to a little different diagram here that shows more of the big picture. Let me sit down here. Kneeling on the rocks is painful. Um, and so here's just a classic model of what these detachment faults might look like in the context of these things called metamorphic core complexes. So if you allow more extension to occur, so the area is being extended or stretched, in this case to the left and the right, you get these big detachment faults. Um, and because so much extension is occurring, that allows these rocks below the detachment fault, which now have less pressure on them, they actually kind of rise up. And so this is the model, one of the models we have for these detachment faults and metamorphic core complexes. You actually, the football or the, the foot wall, the foot wall, not the football, the foot wall or the lower plate actually rises or kind of rebounds in response to all the extension that's taken place. Let me draw the extension on here just so we remember that that's the fundamental force that's at play here. And so the idea then is you get these detachment faults along maybe both sides of the area that's being extended, but sometimes just one. So again, this is the classic cartoon here. 
And in many places, that'll bring up these older, uh, what we call basement rocks, the crystalline, usually metamorphic and intrusive igneous rocks will be the ones that we find in the lower plate or in the foot wall. And the younger rocks are the ones that are uh, being slid off the top here. At this specific one here, we actually have the opposite. We have the, the younger rocks in, in the foot wall and the older rocks um, in the hanging wall or in the upper plate. And that's probably because this area experienced so much extension that it generated its own magma. So if you imagine this model here with the extension, if you just, instead of having these basement rocks, what if instead we actually generated a big pot of magma and then that magma cooled and solidified while it was still underground to form granite or granitic rocks that were obviously much younger. And that's the case we have here. So we actually have granites that formed during the extensional event itself. So uh, there you have it. Let's go look at the rocks though. That's more exciting, but I wanted to give you a little bit of a context there as to what's going on. So right here in the gully, we have the contact. We have the actual fault itself beautifully exposed with that razor sharp line between the brown reddish rocks and these gray rocks uh, just below. And if we find a good spot, we might be able to see where, because this is a fault surface, so there's an incredible amount of friction and movement that's taking place right at this interface. And so we might expect, as we've seen in other videos and other locations, that there's uh, rock, the rocks here are polished. Sometimes we'll see lines along these faces, along these fault planes that indicate the movement of the fault. And those are called slicken lines. So those can tell us which way exactly the whole thing moved. We know that it slid, you know, more or less down to the east, but you know, was it moving this way more or that way or that way? Those are things we might glean if we can find some of those. They also might be places along this fault plane where we see some discoloration, maybe some mineralization, because we may have enhanced fluid flow through that as well. So that surface I just touched there was a little bit polished, but let's see if we can find, find something a little bit better. Here's another little surface down here. And this is definitely pretty polished. So this is pretty awesome here. I'm touching a 1.7 billion year old granite and sitting, or excuse me, these are the younger rocks. Apologize. This is the 15 million year old granite and it's juxtaposed directly by this fault with these 1.7 billion year old uh, Proterozoic rocks. So you can see some crude lines here, more or less running in this direction. And we'd really probably want to scavenge and look at a lot of places to see if that's the case. Here's a nice piece of the overlying uh, granitic material. Um, here it is more or less in place here. So you can see it really well exposed over by Davis Dam, uh, which is a few miles away. So let's follow this fault plane. Oh, here's a nice surface up here. Let's see if this is this is what we're looking for. Yeah, so here's again a nice, I mean, this is just beautifully smooth, just smooth to the touch, almost perfectly planar. And, you know, there's not perf, I wouldn't say these are like awesome slicken lines, but you do get a sense of lines going in this direction. There's, there's a crude linear fabric running in that direction. Um, Let's go a little bit further up, up and over this exposure here. So this is one of the best exposed and accessible detachment faults I've seen. And essentially what I'm walking on here, um, this surface here that kind of goes up and over, this is the fault surface itself as well. We're just chasing the actual contact between the upper plate and the lower plate. So a little bit of loose sediment in here, a little bit harder to see the fault exposed so we can get some actual rock on rock kind of contacts. So yeah, kind of covered up here, but let's head down this other side a bit 
and see if we can find some good fault exposure. So the rocks kind of busted up right in here, uh, brecciated, which is common along these fault surfaces. And if I get in here, I can definitely see, now this isn't the main fault, but here's some smaller, I guess, secondary faults. There's a nice smooth surface there with slick and lines running in that direction. So remember the grayish rock is the lower plate. Um, another one right here. So here's another surface. These are running at a little bit different angle to the main fault. And that's okay. We sometimes get secondary faults that are accommodating some of the movement and the slip, but just at a different angle. And then underneath this bush here, I think we get some nice surfaces. And the interesting thing here is these are showing um, side to side motion. So definitely a more complicated uh, fault movement history than just what is kind of shown with the cartoons and the diagrams. Also remember that these slick and lines will tend to record the last movement. So you may have had this fault moving things this way for a period of time, but the last movement in this case appears to have been somewhat side to side and that's what gets preserved is the last actual motion across the fault plane so there's the 15 million year old lower plate granites and then as we come over to here you can see the color change so it makes it so dramatic to the much older uh, 1.7 billion year old proterozoic rocks and right here by this mesquite bush is the the contact and the detachment fault itself um yeah interesting uh let's see yeah i don't know if anything we could chase it down that wash but i think we've seen probably some of the better exposures here so so a unique type of fault, I wouldn't say unique, like rare, but a special type of fault, these detachment faults, normal faults um, that are at low angle. So this thing, we'll get back here at a good distance and look at it, probably only dips about 15, maybe 20 degrees or so to the east. So if we come back here, and then turn around, we can actually see the dip there. So I don't have my Brenton compass with me, but if we measured the horizontal down to this surface right here, probably about a 15, maybe 20 degree dip. So that's the dip of the fault plane. So it's dipping down to the east at that angle. But these detachment faults can um, juxtapose really different rock types of very different ages. And like I talked about, they can accommodate quite a bit of extension. So really nice one exposed right here, right next to the road, just south of Laughlin, Nevada. Thanks again for joining me on this little adventure. Geology professor Sean Wilsey. Uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe, do all those good things. If you can support the channel with donations, that's always accepted. And there's links in the video description of how to do that. There's also the thanks button just below the viewer screen. And we appreciate all your help in helping support geology and geology education. So for now, we'll go ahead and sign off from the Newberry Detachment Fault here south of Laughlin, Nevada in the Basin and Range.